Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're taking a look at another Kotobukiya collaboration here. This is with Desktop Army. It's the Frame Arms Girl Sylphie Striker. So there's two different versions of the Frame Arm Girl Sylphie. I just went for the Striker as just between the different kind of weapons, loadouts, and things for it. I thought the Striker just looked a little bit more interesting in my personal opinion, but the other two, like the difference between them mainly is just the weapons, the hair, the face options. Basically there's different option parts. So if you want maximum options, then you have to get both of the kits. But Basically, this is just a larger and obviously a much like full-on model kit version of the desktop army Sylphie figure, which they conveniently show you the box for down there, it looks like. That's that, but anyway, as for the box art here, it's a pretty standard Frame Arms Girl style box. Very cool. I just love the color gradients that they do on these. This looks really nice. Just I like the colors on them. Uh, and then just the illustration here on the front. In this case, it looks like the illustration is by Blade. So there you go, got that. I'm guessing that maybe that's the illustrator who does all the illustrations for the different desktop army uh, figures, perhaps. But on the ends of the box there, you just kind of got the same information. You got the Frame Arms Girl logo and the desktop army logos there. On this side of the box, nothing really much to see here, except list price is a 4,800 yen, so around 45 bucks for this. I think not too bad, it's a pretty standard price there for most kind of frame arms girl kits. This one is going to be a little bit smaller, but it does look like it has a lot of parts, at least in a lot of these little color separation bits and everything. So hopefully it holds together pretty well. We'll find out soon enough. But here's a look at the front and back. So it has this cool jetpack on there as well, which I quite liked about this one. This weird kind of like sword thing that it has, I don't it's a I don't it looks like something. I can't quite figure it out though. I don't really know. It's weird. But then it also has this big kind of fist punching weapon there as well and it's just got the shorter hair version. I think the other version of the Sylphie has like a longer hair or like ponytail or something. Anyway, a little bit different hairstyle on the other one as well but here's the different face options for this. So you have a blank face option if you want to just do whatever with that and I think this probably will come with some different water slide decal options for that and then just kind of a uh, expressionless just sort of like blank face. Uh, oof face and then an eh face. So there you go. There's what it's gonna look like just straight out of the box. It does look pretty good. Obviously, it has a lot of color separation there as is, but it is gonna look a lot nicer once you get it all just painted up, panel lined, and everything. Uh, I mean, it's not really a huge difference. It's got most of the colors pretty much there. It just needs a little bit of uh, panel lining, and that's pretty much it, really. So let's get it cracked open, guys. And as always, if you want to check out different, different uh, Frame Arms Girl stuff, Kotobukiya stuff, and everything there on USA Gundam Store, check the link to USA Gundam Store there down below. You can use my coupon code ZAKORELIUS10 to save yourself 10% off everything. So like on a kit like this, save yourself an extra 5 bucks on the kit. Use that to get a display stand or something. I don't know. Whatever you might, whatever you might want to do with that. But you can save yourself a little bit of money. So we got just all our colors here. Looking very cool. Uh, not quite as, like... Pastelly as the colors look here on the box art. They have a very light pastel sort of look to them. The actual colors of the kit, not quite that light, looks like, but they look pretty good anyway. And of course, you can always paint them. And then it looks like we do have some water slides in here. So let's just take a quick look at these water slides first since we're here. So basically, you just have water slides for the same eye options as what is you have included here on the pre printed faces. So it's not like you have other different options here, which is the case sometimes, but unfortunately, it looks like it's not the case this time. Then a couple little marking logos here it says Sentinel Glory. Again, I'm guessing that's just related to the Desktop Army. I don't think there's any backstory or anything to the Desktop Army series of figures, but I could be wrong about that. So I think it's just kind of a generic kind of marking logo for that, but it's cool you at least have a couple of marking logos included. Let's take a look at the manual here then as well. On the front, it's just the same thing as what's on the front of the box. On the back, just again, the beautiful, nice color gradient on there. Love that. Open it up to the inside, and we've got a couple of sample images here, so you can get a look at just some different weaponizing options and different posing options here. It's pretty much just kind of standing there, so not really much in the way of posing options here, but you can just get a look at what the kit is going to look like when it's all painted up and everything. Here's our parts list over here, and I just want to skip to the back of the manual here first, where we also have our color guide. So there's the color guide listed down there, and then just some more reference images of what the kit looks like when it's all loaded up with all the different armor parts and everything. Option parts and everything, I should say. So uh, as Frame Arm Girls kits go, you just build up all the main body here first, and then you build up the weapons and everything, kind of loaded up with all the different option parts and everything, and then it will just kind of go over all the different uh, uses for those and everything that you can do with all the stuff that's included. So let's us just move on to the runners then, shall we? So in our bag here, we've just got the standard kind of stand base plate that you usually get with different frame arms kits, so that's nice. And one pre-painted part here, which is looks like the part for the head, it's a white part with a little bit of green and yellow pre-painted on there. And then our different face options, which we'll take a look at a little bit more in the review portion of the video. Runner A here is going to be a bunch of parts in white, 
And the same thing for runner B as well, more white armor pieces. Runner C is going to be all of our hair parts here in this kind of teal color. Runner D then is some more parts in white. Runner E as well, a small little runner here of a few more pieces in white palm plastic. Runner F is in flesh tone, we got the blank face option there, as well as a couple other parts like for the neck and head. This kit doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, skin, exposed skin showing, just basically the face there, so that's all the flesh tone parts we need. Runner G is in this really nice yellowish orange color, I really like the look of that. And then Runner H as well in a really nice sort of, uh, it's a little bit darker than like I would say sea foam green, it's slightly darker than that, sort of like a teal green kind of color. And it's different from the hair as well, but it's kind of close to that, it's a little bit more green. Anyway, really nice color here. And then skipping over Runner I, I'm guessing just that's because that Runner is maybe specifically for the other version of the Silphy, but here we have Runner J in the same color as Runner H. Then Runner K is a few parts here in this dark brown color. Same thing for Runner L, seems to be sort of like the mechanical joint kind of detail parts. Runner M is a few more parts here in that nice uh, yellow orangish color. Runner N, a few more parts there in that dark brown. And Runner O, a few more parts there in the dark brown color. And we've got two of this O runner. So there we have all the runners, and as you can see, it's, it looks like there's going to be a lot of really great part separation here. But the problem with that is that then you could have a lot of little tiny parts that don't want to stay in place and things kind of fall apart. Hopefully that's not the case. We'll see how solid it is when it all comes together. So let me get it put together and we'll find out. All right, so all built up, I gotta say, I ended up liking this kit a lot more than I was expecting to. I was expecting it to just, just be kind of very small and fiddly and not really all that much more exciting than your regular desktop army figure, which I do like, but there's not just there's just not really a whole lot that you can do with them. Um, this one though, it's actually much more solid than I was expecting. The color separation on it is great. It looks fantastic, just built up, just straight up as it is. The different weapon option parts and things that it has are pretty cool and some different cool options that you can do with those. So definitely impressed with this kit just from the straight up build so far. But let's take a look at it in some more detail here, shall we? So first off, I just want to mention about the base. The base is great because it's just your same platform base that you typically have with a frame arms growth kit, but this much more bulky arm you have for that just gives you some nice posing options for that. It's plenty strong enough to hold up the kit as the kit doesn't really weigh that much. It's pretty small. And just to give you guys an idea of the size comparison for this, here's your standard Megami device kit. And I don't have a frame arms growth kit, unfortunately. Frame arms growth are a little bit larger than Megami device, but even compared to a Megami device, which are a little bit smaller, you can see, it's still pretty small in scale. So all the color separation, articulation, everything built into this kit that you'll see here, built into such a small size is really impressive. So like I said, the base is great. You have plenty of articulation there and it supports the kit plenty well. It plugs up into that plug underneath that part there for a backpack. But if you don't have this backpack part on there, you can see you can plug that onto either straight onto her back or their, her lower back, upper or lower back there. And also you have this cat motif here going on at the back and then also on the front here with the cat ears sort of there surrounding her chest as well. And speaking of cat ears, let's get into the articulation with these ear parts up here. Those actually don't move at all. They seem like they would maybe rotate or something, but they don't. I'm kind of glad that they don't because it saves you the trouble of trying to line them up sometimes when you're posing and you'll notice that you pose one just a little bit off and you kind of have to fix the pose, but if they're just fixed in place, you don't need to worry about that. Also, this part here on the front doesn't move. That's just fixed in place there like that, but the head is just connected on a ball joint and then it has the same kind of typical frame arms girl style joint there at the base of the neck as well. You can move that side to side tilt the head forward all the way down to there and back up to there before it's kind of uh, the back of the hair is kind of blocking you from moving that any further back but the hair design is great and then you do have a couple of leftover parts with this kit and included among the leftover parts is the hair parts from the regular silphy so you could use these uh, basically require you to just remove this whole part that goes around the front of the head and these side parts and you just replace it with these on the side of the head so you do have those included here you don't have instructions on how to build them but if you just cut out your leftover parts like I said you only have a few leftover parts aside from these so you should be able to figure out how to put these parts together to use for some hair options if you wanted then in the torso section you've got a nice forward and back bend there all the way back and then all the way forward a little bit side to side here as well so again simple but very effective for the movement of that and it's solid enough as well the shoulders won't really bend forward and back at all but you can bring the arm up to here before it's going to be pulling out the peg a little bit there on the arm but you can get that up to about 90 degrees before that starts to happen and like i said it's going to be pulling out any further 
And then right above the elbow joint there, we've got some rotation as well. You can bend that to a pretty full bend there for the elbow. This hand, which just kind of looks like a hand or sort of looks like a hand, this just rotates there. So it's not on a ball joint or anything there, but the rotation should be enough to just do some simple posing with that. If you wanted to replace this with just some other hands, some Kotobukiya style hands or something, you can do that very easily. Just pull these hands off. So whether it be frame arms girl or regular just frame arms style hands, like the more mechanical hands, you can plug those into here. Also Bandai option parts hands should work in here just as well. You would just have to convert the ball joint into a peg. Basically you can do that just by shaving down the ball joint until it just basically turns into a peg shape and you can plug it into there. So that would be no problem. You also have hard points on inside and outside of the arm there as you can see up on the shoulder as well for plugging on our accessories for this. Now frame arms girls typically then do have another point of articulation where this hip section will also be able to swing forward and back as well but this one doesn't have that so I think that's kind of fine. It doesn't really necessarily need it. These hips or the legs will come all the way out to the side to about there and then up to the front. No problems bringing those all the way up like there. You can see hard points on the side of the leg, the back of the leg. Also here on the front of the leg if you remove this part here for this you have a hard point if you wanted to use something else instead of that included knee armor for that. Now building this kit everything went together really well except for one of these little parts. You see these little yellow parts on the side of the leg there. Those are extra one, two, three, four little yellow pieces that attach onto the side of the leg. This one in particular didn't want to go on. It wasn't staying on no matter what I did it wasn't staying on so I ended up having to file down that part a little bit more. Uh, to get it to fit into place there. I don't really know why. I think it's just maybe some error with the mold. I don't know if any of you guys have this kit and had that similar issue. Let me know in the comment section so I know if it's just me or if that was an issue common with this kit. But one of them I had to file down a little bit more to get to fit into place. But now it's fine and it works. It doesn't really bother anything. But just to finish up the articulation here, the knee joint has a double joint, uh, but it's a little bit tricky to use. You have the first joint, which is easy enough if it just bends like that, and there is a second joint, but it tends to, when you're trying to move it, it tends to just kind of pop out of place before you get the full bend there. But you can see this part in here that's supposed to bend up. It doesn't always bend up as much as it's supposed to before the peg just comes out of the hole there. But assuming those parts stay together as they're supposed to, you can get a pretty nice big full bend there in the knee, which is pretty nice. Now, as for the feet, obviously it doesn't really have feet much, so you can't really do anything with those. There's no articulation with these, except for the fact that this little uh, flip out tab here at the back, which will just help the kits to stand up. You could point it all the way down and have that, I guess, as sort of like a crossbone style knife coming out the foot, I suppose. And if you wanted to plug on some normal feet onto this, if you just remove this, you can see it's also a standard size peg hole for that. And I think you could probably plug on some other different feet onto this, probably from some of the other different frame arms kit, frame arms girl kit, I should say. I don't think it would be a super smooth fit in there. You might have to do a little bit of putty and modification, but I think you could plug some normal feet onto that probably. And then just putting the backpack on, you can see this plugs on with two pegs, so it will kind of lock the torso articulation into place. Once this is plugged on there, you can no longer move this, uh, these top and bottom half of the torso there. The articulation of this is pretty basic, basically just these main wing engine sections will move up and down. These little missiles attached onto there are removable, so you can pop that on or off if you wanted to have that on or off. If that's off though, it'll be leave a big gap in the wing there. And these little machine gun sections attached onto here, these could be removed and then attached onto the arm as separate weapons if you wanted to. And they don't have a handle for them, but they just have this standard peg, so you can just plug that right onto the side of the arm. You've got that as an attachment weapon, sort of like that as well. Now as for our other weapon attachment parts, you've got the very cute cat-faced shield here, which can also be attached onto the side of the arm, or as it's shown in the manual, it can be attached up onto the top of the shoulder. They're like that. You have your options of whether where you want to place that. It's totally up to you. You've got this like broadsword style weapon as well, very broad, but it's very cool there in its design that just pops down into the hand, easy peasy. And then the claw hand as well too will just pop down into the hand also, but I just want to show you some more articulation on this. This one has like an angry cat face on it as well, which is pretty cute. Uh, this one, the fingers will move in and out like that, and then also the thumb is just on a ball joint there. As you can see, it's kind of your normal sort of like wrist attachment point that you use for that. So you can move that thumb part around a little bit, and then this whole handle will also rotate a little bit uh, like that as well. So if you have those parts spread out, it sort of looks like it's reaching to grab something, but if you close those up, then it looks more, of course, like it's sort of like a punching weapon as well. So very cool. And we do also have included a few other different handle parts. Now these are handles, you've got two of each, uh, two with this male peg and adapter and two with this female peg adapter. So if you wanted to have some other weapons or anything attached into holding onto the hand, 
you can plug this handle down into the hand and you can plug whatever onto this. So I guess you could use this as a handle for the submachine guns on the back just by maybe doing something like that and that could be something you could hold in the hand and so that could look alright as well. Although personally I think I kind of like it just attached onto the side of the arm. It looks more interesting to me. And then one last thing that the manual does show that you can do with these is also combine them together like that which I'm not exactly sure what good that'll do but if you want to get creative there's something that you can do with these as well. But so anyway, I mean, as tends to happen with some of these Kotobukiya kits, for the size of the kit when it all comes together, the price does seem kind of high for this. It is a little bit expensive for what it seems that you get, but I think I'm really glad that I finally got around to checking out one of these Silphy kits because I, I like Frame Arms Girl kits and desktop army figures are fine. I just wasn't really sure I was really going to be into a desktop army style Frame Arms Girl kit like this. And I wasn't really sure I was really all that into the design, but I, now that I've built one, I really like it and I'm really looking forward to, hopefully they'll do some more in the future. I know there's another version of Silphy, but I feel like kind of one version of Silphy maybe is enough for me, but hopefully they'll do some other ones in the line similar related to this. As like I said, this kit surprised me at how solid it is, how nice the articulation, the posing, the weapon options you get with this. Everything's like simple, but works so well. Again, even just straight out of the box, just the color separation on, that you get with this is really nice. So of course, the couple of parts that are pre-printed do help as well, just for that extra little bit of color separation, even though it's not an actual separate part. But even if you don't end up doing anything else with this, just straight out the box, this kit looks fantastic. But I would say a little bit of panel lining on this and maybe some top coat and it's going to be looking even better. Of course, you could go the whole nine yards and paint it up and do all that, but without withstanding I think this is a great looking kit no matter how far you want to go with it whether it's not very far at all or you know taking it to super customizing it which could look really great as well so definitely recommend this kit to you guys if you're a Frame Arms Girl fan, Megami Device fan of these type of kits and maybe you're like me and you were kind of holding off on this one not thinking that it was really going to be all that interesting I would say if you get a chance definitely check it out it's more interesting than I was expecting it to be so I'm really glad that I finally got around to checking this one out and if you guys have any other further questions or comments about this kit do feel free to ask down below again thank you guys as always for the support liking the video subscribing and all that if you guys do also want to support us at gundam store of course the link as always is down below you can check out this kit and other different frame arms girl stuff and other things from kodobukiya bandai and all that you can save 10 percent off everything there on the store using my coupon code zakurilius10 so check that out down below and as always guys hope you're having a great day i'll see you next time bye bye